Hi, I am Site Supervisor Anna Shackelford, and I am currently standing here in one of our test units that we've actually just finished excavating. Uh, and it is located on the south side of the Memorial Church, right up against the doorway, and partially uh, actually in the church cemetery itself. Uh, so for this episode of Dig Deeper, we're going to talk a little bit about our findings uh, during these excavations. So our main objective of digging in this area was actually to take a look at this brick pad that's right in front of me. Now we knew that it was here uh, from excavations that were conducted in the early 1900s. We had some, some maps of their findings, but we wanted to go back and actually take a look at it ourselves so we could see some of the different construction styles for the brick churches here. Now while the doorway for the memorial church is a little bit further to the west, right here is where the actual location would have been for the south entrance to uh, the 1640s brick church at Jamestown. And now that we've uncovered it, we can see all sorts of different construction styles um, that tie to the two different phases in which that brick church was built. Uh, it was started in 1639 over here on the eastern end. Right here is actually that same brick foundation. Now you may remember that last year we had uncovered uh, the top of the brick pad. Since then, we've been able to continue our excavations uh, around the edges uh, and uncover more of the mortar giving us insight into how the brick pad was actually constructed. So you can see we have three different uh, types of mortar interacting here with the brick pad. We have this brown mortar here, got a yellowish brown clay, as well as a gray mortar. Now we believe that the earliest iteration is this brown mortar in front of me, which uh, it looks exactly the same as the brown mortar in the 1647 foundation. Um, so it looks like the brick pad wasn't constructed until the second phase of construction in the brick church in 1647. Uh, some further evidence of that is right here in between the brick pad and the 1639 foundation. Uh, besides the difference in the two mortars, the brown and the gray, you can see that the brick pad hasn't actually been tied in to the 1639 foundation. So the latest iteration of our brick pad is indicated here by the gray mortar. You can see uh, they added a, a two brick deep curve along the outside of the brick pad. Uh, and at this point, all we know is that it was uh, added sometime after 1647. Uh, there were repairs done to the church later in the 1680s, but we don't know for certain uh, whether that's exactly when this curb was added. So we believe it's the foundation for a portico or a covered entrance outside of the church. So our last mortar type we have here is our uh, yellowish brown clay. Uh, which we believe was added around the same time as the foundation for the portico. If you look closely, you can still see that there are some impact sections. We also did remove a large portion of clay over top of these bricks. Um, and so that's likely what would have held those original tiles in place. Now, when we were excavating, uh, we didn't come across any of, in, uh, any of the intact tiles, but we know from those previous archaeological records that they were indeed here. So the yellow clay seems to have been used uh, as a part of the construction style um, for the portico foundation, which is why we believe it is a part of that iteration of the brick, uh, brick pad. So besides the brick pad here, during our excavations, we've been coming across multiple other features, some modern, some historic. Uh, many of the more modern features that we've come across uh, are different types of post holes. Uh, for instance, we have had signposts uh, on the eastern side of the unit uh, related to informational signs for the cemetery. Uh, and then in front of me here, you can see evidence of one of the other modern posts for a wooden fence that we removed, uh, as well as uh, one of the post holes for this iron fence, uh, fence which is a later iteration uh, of the same boundary marker. Uh, some of the historic features that we were finding in this unit are actually planting furrows. And so those are the um, darker rows that you can see running throughout the bottom of the unit here. Uh, what's interesting about the furrows is that we were actually seeing some of the same orientation during our memorial church excavations in the bottom of post holes uh, that we had excavated within the church. Uh, regarding the planting furrows, they're very early 17th century uh, and are related to when the colonists first arrived here at the fort. 
So I mentioned that we are partially digging in a cemetery, and as such, uh, we are finding a lot of burials in this unit. Now, we're not actually going to dig down into any of them. 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, we just uncover burials at the very top so we can map them and record them. We don't actually want to disturb anybody. Um, but we know they're burials, um, first of all, uh, because they are large rectangles that are oriented east-west. Um, uh, and also because of the material that is actually in the burial itself. So any of these uh, orange colored uh, rectangles in the ground are burials that we have uh, discovered here. Uh, and so you can see that they contain uh, lots of different layers of soil. You have some of the, the native horizon, the old topsoil, you've got some E horizon, and then a lot of the orange in here is a subsoil that is even further down below those two layers. So when you dig a burial and you end up filling it back in, all of those layers get turned together, and you can see that at the surface. Uh, one difficult part about the excavations here in this unit um, is that since there's a church here that is in use from 1617 all the way up until the 1750s, there are a whole bunch of people buried here. And so behind me here, you can see we have this whole mess of graves um, where they are cutting through one another. So it's uh, a little difficult sometimes to see the exact edges of those burials. Uh, I believe we have about eight right here behind me um, within about a six foot span. So what I mean by cut is that uh, some burials are whole, they have not been disturbed, uh, whereas others have actually been disturbed by previous burials. And so we can actually see uh, some examples here uh, uh, within all of these burials over here on the western side. So with this partial burial here, we can see that it's still whole. It has not been disturbed by another feature yet. Whereas with this burial here, it has been disturbed by this newer one. So we also had an interesting feature in this unit that was full of plaster, and you can still see some of it in the profile here, uh, which we haven't excavated because it's capped by this iron post. Um, and we're still trying to figure out exactly what this feature was. Uh, our best bet right now is that when they were constructing the brick pad here, there was some sort of tree stump here that they had to remove. And while they were deconstructing the 1617 timber frame church, uh, they were filling in this divot using those large pieces of plaster that they're taking down. Uh, and we actually had a similar feature um, a little bit further down on the south side of the church, a uh, similar size divot full of large, large pieces of plaster that can be dated to the 1617 church. So besides our usual assemblage of artifacts, while we did find plenty of you know, pipe stones, bits of glass, nails, we also had some rather interesting artifacts coming out of these units here. Uh, for instance, we had a spade nose. So, I mean, think about the uh, metal head of a shovel today, what we were finding here, um, as well as a piece of Bermudan limestone, uh, which is not local to the area, so it would have had to have been brought over by the English. All right, so now that we have wrapped up excavations uh, in these units, we can lay down our filter fabric and backfill using the same dirt that we took out of the unit. And that helps us to preserve all of the features uh, that we have found. So if you want to come back in the future and reinvestigate, uh, they're still here and in good condition. Uh, after we wrap up here, then we'll be able to move on to another area and start some more excavation. So stay tuned to see what we're up to next.